Mark, let's talk about the interrogation. Let's talk about the beginnings of it, how you began to use it with an actor, how you came up with the idea. The interrogation process that I use with actors is not something I, quote, came up with. Uh, it's something I literally discovered um, during a very long process. I've been um, working as a director for 30, 40 years, something like that. I lose track of how many years. <coughs> and it's one of those things that I look back over my career and I realize what I've been doing. I didn't realize this until maybe 10 years ago, what I've been doing. I, I've been constantly in a process of experimentation in directing, experimentation working with actors, an experimentation that has had at the core a very simple question. There must be a better way to do this. There's got to be another way. There are a lot of great ways of doing this. Now, when you think about what we're doing, which we talked about before, we're all storytellers. Directors, writers, and actors are all storytellers. And our goal, as I see it, is to tell stories as honestly, truthfully, openly, and authentically as possible. And at the center of these stories are characters. So we want characters to be honest, truthful, and authentic characters. Not that the character is always telling the truth, I don't mean that, but we're presenting the character as honestly as we can. And through the years, going way back, now I'm going back to Stanislavski, which is the early 1900s, he caused a great shift in this process of acting, which you probably know about from, quote, presentational acting. There was a book I had once which I wish I could find. I think I've lost it. It was actually a book that was written in the, I think, late 1800s that for actors showing all the positions that an actor could hold to portray or relate an emotion to the audience. And if you look at the early films, the films were certainly the ones before sound, you can see this, you know, what this meant, like, and these looks, in other words, and this book was a wonderful book because it showed all these, it says, this is how you do it. This is how you act. This is how you portray this. And so that's presentational acting. And what Stanislavski was doing in the early 1900s, he asked a very simple question, profound question. He was struggling with the fact that in the Moscow Art Theater, they'd give a performance, or he'd give a performance, or the actors he's working with would give a performance, and it would be powerful. And the next night, it wouldn't be. There was no consistency. Sometimes it would be, uh, feel authentic, and other times it would feel really false and fake. <clears throat> and so he was asking, how can we stay closer to those powerful performances that, that feel real? Or even he as an actor, when I feel like I'm really connected with the character. So he did this very significant thing. He shifted at that time, it's a, it's a seismic shift. Let's take our mind off of acting and let's look at the character. And let's talk about the character, what the character wants, what the character needs, what's in the way of the character getting what he wants, how he's trying to get what he wants. Let's look at what the character is doing and stop thinking about what I am doing as an actor or what the other actors are doing as actors or how we think we should portray this. Let's try to understand the character. And that was the big shift. Stanislavski, shifting to the character. Now this led to, as you know, the group theater and Harold Klerman, Bobby Lewis, Stella Adler, Strasberg, Sanford Meisner, all the people from the group theater who studied, a lot of them studied with Stanislavski, went and learned from him. And this changed the way theater was done in this country, the way acting was done in this country. It became more realistic. Eventually became known as method acting. <coughs> but it was a focus to it, let's present real life, real behavior rather than presentational behavior or acting. And by acting, I mean pretending, pretending to be sad, to pretending to be angry. Can we actually do performances where that genuine emotion is, is exhibited and felt within the actor? And that's what happened. And then Strasberg and Strasberg and Ilya Kazan, Ilya Kazan, I don't know if you know, he's the one that created the actor's studio and eventually turned it over to Strasberg, who turned it into what he's turned into, that actor studio. And then Sanford Meisner, who was also a member of the, the group theater, felt, he felt there's a better way. 
Now he split off from that group. Strasbourg went <coughs> um, ahead and formed and reinforced the method acting. The method acting, which is the actor trying to stimulate those emotions from within himself based on his own life history, sense memory, experiences, and seeing can I generate those genuine feelings. <coughs> Meisner said, and that's not what the folk primary focus should be. Meisner said the focus needs to be on the other character, <coughs> on the event, what is actually happening in the moment. So that, so that was a split that happened in the group theater. And so, so now we have the method for technique or method, and then we have the Meisner technique, which are different, but they actually complement each other. Now, <coughs> I'm coming through theater at the same time. I actually studied, I'm very happy to say this, with some of these people. I studied with Harold Clerman, Bobby Lewis, Stella Adler, a lot of people from the group theater. I did not study with Sanford Meisner. I wish I had, but I've studied a lot of his work, and there's a great documentary out there by Sidney Pollack on the Meisner tech. He followed Sanford Meisner for a whole month through a whole class. And so I've studied that. So my pursuit was similar to theirs. There's got to be another way. <coughs> Not dismissing any of this, but seeing these as stepping stones, which I've done in, in my work. So I've studied all this and I keep experimenting. And it was about 10, 8, 10 years ago, something hit me which was rather startling to me, which was, and I was actually in Amsterdam uh, teaching at the Binger Institute at the time, and that actors are dealing always, always. Their pursuit is uh, to try to become the character. The director is helping, everybody's helping, trying to get the actor to become the character. And the actor is dealing with certain obstacles, there n enormous obstacles in that path. But what hit me at one point was one of the biggest obstacles for the actor, any actor to be able to do that, was the actor themselves. And ironically, the intent to become a character gets in the way of becoming the character. The intention, the hard work of becoming the character will get in the way. How can you become a character? when all you're thinking about is becoming the character. That is not what the character is thinking about. That was really bizarre when I started to play with this idea when in, in Amsterdam I said, and I didn't really know, this is why I'm saying I discovered it, I didn't really know what I was saying. I said to the group of directors, now these are working directors who have made many films, they're all professional directors, and this whole workshop was on working with actors. And I said to one of the directors, I tell you what, to, here's what you need to do. You need to stop directing the actor. He goes, what? Well, this is the, what the whole workshop is about. I said, stop it. Stop directing the actor. Direct the character. And he looked at me. And to tell you the truth, Karen, at that moment, I wasn't quite sure what I had said. And it's one of those moments in my teaching career, one of those wonderful moments where I say something. And I have no idea what it means, but I have a feeling it's good. <laughs> I have a feeling there's something there. And so the, I remember the director said, well, show me what you mean. So I said, I, okay. And I, I turned to the actor and I stopped. I didn't talk to the actor. I talked to her character. And I'm talking to her character and I'm starting asking the character questions. And, all. and this is where the interrogation started. I started asking and what I'm seeing is suddenly this character start to emerge. This character is starting to emerge because I'm questioning the character. I'm not saying to the actor, this is what I want you to do. I'm not questioning the character about what she thinks about the, um, her character. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just talking to the character and saying, who are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why do you want this from the... And starting to probe inside the... And what happened was this character emerged. We all sat there and went, oh my God, this is amazing. Now the rest of the workshop went that way, went shifted dramatically still with me not quite sure what I had done, but feeling this, I'm on to something here. And it was during that workshop that the word interrogation came up because someone said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm interrogating. So that's where the world, that's where it became called the interrogation process. It wasn't until much later, I kept 
doing this. I kept experimenting, as I have my whole life, experimenting with everything. That I kept <coughs> using this technique, teaching this technique, even though I didn't quite understand it, and starting to deconstruct and, and spent a long time, which, as I mentioned to you before, um, and Elsha and I have been doing this, still deconstructing it, still trying to figure out why it works and how it works. And we're deeper and deeper in this to understand what this process is. And what became clear to me after a while, not immediately, was that I'm talking to a character. Now I'm asking a character, very simple but very profound, and um, questions, pushing the character to answer questions. After that experience in, in Amsterdam, I kept exploring what I had stumbled upon. I, and I literally mean I feel like I stumbled upon something in many forms. And there was one time I was working on it, I think it was here in Los Angeles, and I started to ask myself, okay, I'm talking to an actor, I'm sorry, I'm talking to a character, and I'm questioning the character, I'm interrogating the character, I'm pushing the character, and the character is responding, maybe resisting me, but is not refusing this engagement. And I know that this makes no sense at all. It's totally illogical. First of all, as we've talked about before, the character, the character does not know that she's in a movie, does not, is, is not in a movie. So I'm not, I can't ask questions about movie making, line, script, I, but I can ask questions about who they are, what they want, what they're doing, anything I want. But the question came to my mind, who is she talking to? Who am I? Because if she's not a character in a movie, if she's not participating in a movie, but she's just herself, she doesn't have a director, who am I? And then it became clear to me, I am not a character that she's responding to. Who I am, I am the voices in her head, what I call the committee. The committee is the collection of voices that we all have. Each of us has all these voices in our head that we have debates with and discussions, that have opinions and attitudes. And that what I am doing is I am giving voice to the committee in the character's head, not the actor's head, the character's head. In fact, I am creating a character by creating the character's committee and allowing the character to respond to her own committee. And her response, every response, creates the character. So I'm creating a character from deep, deep inside the character, actually without the help of the actor. The actor's attitude or feelings or opinions about the character are fine, but they, as many actors have told me, there's no room for that. The character is working so hard to <coughs> manage her way through this interrogation. There's no room for the actor's imagination or creativity to come in, although I do believe unconsciously it is working. But the character is being formed from inside the character to the point where the character can take over completely. <clears throat>